One of the biggest limiting factors, I think, when it comes to soybean yields overall in the United States is lack of fertility. Let's face it, how many farmers are even applying fertilizer to their soybeans? It's something we're doing on our farm, and it's a major step to higher yields. Okay, okay. Now you say that farmers aren't even applying fertilizer, but I talk aren't. to a lot of farmers and say, yep. oh no, I throw a little bit out there. Well, what do you throw? Well, I had a little bit of P or K left over from my corn, so I spread it out on the acres to get rid of it. It's not a complete fertility program. Even the guys that are putting some on, they think they're covering their bases. It's not a complete program. Uh, well, here's, here's what I hear. I hear, well, I am over fertilizing my corn, <laughs> you know? And I go, really? How much are you applying? And what was your corn yield? And they'll say, well, I raised 200 bushel corn last year. And I say, yeah, so what'd you put on for fertilizer? I'll say, oh, I put a lot on. I put at least 100 pounds of MAP and 100 pounds of potash out there. And I'll say, you know, actually, your plant used more than that, and it left with the grain truck when the corn left the field. So what's that extra fertility you're talking about for soybeans? Well, the big challenge is fertilizer <laughs> prices have gone up astronomically, and so have yields. And as yields have gone up and the fertilizer price has gone up, that means your fertility bill is very expensive. And you may think, well, I was spending $100 a few years back and I'm spending 125 now I've moved up 25 percent well you may have moved up 25 percent but you may not be putting on even as many pounds as you were before if that's the measure you're going by the other thing would be if you look at just pounds and you say well I put on 100 pounds a few years ago yes but you're getting double the yield now you should be putting at least 200 pounds on now and this is where many guys fall flat we used to do a two-year program on our farm when my dad first uh, first started farming in South Dakota, that was a typical practice where he came from in Iowa and he brought that with him that, you know, I'm going to put two years out, I'm going to put it out in front of my corn and the soybeans will take whatever's left from that corn. And it just doesn't work out anymore with the levels of yield that we're getting. Our farm last year had fantastic soybeans, more soybeans per acre than we've ever had before. And you think about it, Brian was pretty disappointed in that because of what he's gonna to have to spend on fertility <laughs> this year. Well, it does take a lot out of the ground. Let's talk specifically about what it takes out. Okay, there is a certain number of nutrients that are needed just to produce the stover and then more nutrients to produce the grain. I always like to focus on the grain because I figured that's going to actually leave the field. The stover's staying out there. We're leaving all the stover out there. But the grain's leaving the field. So here's what it takes just to raise the grain for 60 bushel soybeans, approximately 48 units of actual phosphate and 84 units of actual K2O potassium. 84 units. So if you wanted to replace just what you removed, you'd need about 100 pounds of MAP and about 150 pounds of potash. That is an unbelievable amount of nutrients in terms of what most farmers will put out there. Yes, it's going to cost some money. I know that P and K are expensive, but if you don't replace what you're removing, then eventually, sooner or later, your yields have to come down. There is no other alternative. Okay, you left out two key components, Brian. Here's the problem. This is where we go. We start focusing on P and K, yep. and everybody gets excited. They say, okay, P and K, I can do that. I'm buying them. I'm good. But you forget about one major nutrient, nitrogen, and you forget about the micronutrients. Now, let's talk about nitrogen. With soybeans, it's a legume crop. It can produce most of its own nitrogen, but not all. It can produce most. So you say, wait a minute. Now, I need to apply nitrogen? Maybe, maybe in some of the ground that you're farming, you may need to put out 10, 20, 30 pounds of nitrogen or maybe even a little bit more. But the big key is putting on rhizobia bacteria on the seed, inoculant. You need to inoculate your soybeans, no matter if you're raising soybeans every year or if you're raising them every other year in your rotation or every third year. You need to put on that inoculant. It's going to help those soybeans produce more of their own nitrogen. It's going to help them leave more nitrogen for your next crop like corn or wheat, for example. The other thing that I mentioned was micronutrients. Soybeans need micronutrients. It helps out keeping more flowers. It helps out having more pods per node. It's going to help you out in yield if you're short in one or more micronutrients on your farm. So don't forget to add the micros. As we push levels of P and K up, we've got to bring those micros along as well. Otherwise, we load up on the P and K and that ties up some of those micronutrients or stops them from getting into the plant. And that's not a good thing. You can't get out of balance in your soil. Well, once again, I realize that we may be shocking you here when we say it takes a bunch of nutrients 
to produce the stover. And besides that, if you're gonna raise 60 bushel grain, you're gonna have to have 48 units of phosphate and 84 units of K2O potassium, and that's literally going to leave the field when the grain does. That's a lot of nutrients, and you say, oh my goodness, I can't afford that. Well, you know what? You can't afford not to have good soybeans when we have a great price out there. We've had that here for the last few years, but if you don't put your fertilizer out there, you don't have some plant food out there, you're just not gonna raise a good soybean crop. And when you're looking at your soil test this winter, you need to look not only at just the parts per million and the availability of fertilizer, you also need to look at your organic matter levels. If those numbers are going down, you're mining that soil. You're taking more out than you're putting back. So make sure you're maintaining your fertility levels and your organic matter levels in your soil. Now, the other thing that you can do is use very available forms, different forms of fertilizer, say liquid fertilizer, that would be highly available and easily getting into your plant products like uh, well, what? whether it's liquid products like Pro Germinator yeah. or SureK or whether you're using a veil. All of those have really shown to be very big improvements over the current technology on the market. We're getting more availability of those nutrients we're putting out. So we don't have to put on a whole bunch of extra, we just put on what we need and get it all into the plant. A lot of times, especially with dry potash or dry phosphorus sources, we're getting 25%, maybe a little better into the plant the first year. With some of the highly available liquids or using a veil, we're gonna get 75% or more into the plant right away. That allows us to be a little bit more environmentally conscious using less product out there, but also economically conscious, it can really benefit your farm. Well, it's important to do a good job with an overall fertility program in soybeans if you want high yields and high profits. But the only downside I can really see with this fertilizer thing is if you add more fertilizer, you might have more of our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it on your farm coming up later in the show.